Let's sing redeemed tonight. I do know we're glad. We're, everybody glad we're redeemed? Amen. Sweet is the song I'm singing today. I'm redeemed. I'm redeemed. Well, trouble and sorrow have vanished away. divine oh glory glory christ is mine my all to him i now resign i have been i have been redeemed verse one again squeeze the song i'm singing today i'm redeemed i'm redeemed I never shall forget the day.
my side. My feeble steps, he comes to God. When trials come, he comforts me. Through faith in him or sin, I have the victory. I never shall forget the day when all the burdens of my soul are rolled away. It makes me happy, glad, and free. I'll sing and shout it for him. There's a blessed day that's coming, coming soon. We shall see the King. There's a blessed time that's coming, coming soon. It may be evening, morning, or at noon. Well, it's the wedding of the bride united with the groom. We shall see the King when He comes. I said we shall see the King. We shall see the King, oh, we shall see the King when He comes. Well, He's coming in power, well, hail the blessed hour. We shall see the King when He comes. Are you ready should the Savior call today? Would Jesus say, well done, or go away? Well, my home is for the pure. crown your Savior, King, and Lord of all. Well, the kingdoms of this world shall soon before Him fall. We shall see the King when He comes. I said we shall see the King. We shall see the King. Oh, we shall see the King when He comes. Well, He's coming and power will hail the blessed hour. We shall see the King when He comes. Blessed time that's coming, coming soon. It may be evening, morning, or at noon. Well, it's the wedding of the bride united with the groom. We shall see the king when he comes. I said, We shall see the king. Oh, my brother, are you ready for the call to crown your Savior, King, and Lord of all? All the kingdoms of this world shall soon before him fall. We shall see the King when he comes. Oh, yes, we shall see the King. We shall see the King. We shall see the King when he comes. Well, he's coming. The blessed hour, we shall see the King when He comes. Hallelujah! He's coming. I said He's coming soon. Soon and very soon, we're going to see the King. Hallelujah! God bless you as you see, Brother Dathan. Come up here and testify. Come up here and greet the folks tonight. Testify. Hallelujah! God been good to you. Said God's been good to us, hadn't He? All my life, the Lord's been good to me. Last night, uh, about this time, as probably a little earlier than this, was out in the front yard. I had a meeting this morning, and uh, so. But last night, the boys was wanting to play football, so we was playing football in the front yard. And Judah come running around behind his daddy to get a handoff, and he handed him the ball, and Judah reached for the ball and hit Brother Tim's right between his knee and his thigh and jammed his hand in the side of his leg. And the girls all heard something pop. And he turned around. We thought he'd just popped his knuckle. and uh, But he broke that bone in his hand right there. Last night, immediately turned around, 
was holding it, Brother Joey, and was, and uh, so I felt up and said, well, man, we ought, probably ought to go get that checked, and went down there, and sure enough, and uh, I said, son, you got to look at the good side. He said, what side is that? I said, your hand's going to be in a cast, and you're going to get to learn to write with your left hand. He said, how is that good? I said, well, your teacher's already called, and she said she's already had kids with broke bones, and she'll do the reading and the writing for you to help you to get through. I said, what a teacher. Mine made me learn how to write with the right hand, the left hand. So God, God's been good to us. He's been faithful. Even through the hard times, God's good. Turn to your neighbor, even through the hard times, God is good. Oh, now tell them like you mean it. Even through the hard times, God's good. He's faithful. I said he's faithful. He's faithful. We got home later that night, and uh, the shower head had been messing up downstairs at Mom's house where uh, Sister Snow and I stay. And, and uh, she said, I tell you what I need you to do. I need you to go out to Lowe's and just buy a new shower head. She said, as a matter of fact, why don't you get one of them you can take off? So I just went and got one of those, and we got back to the house, and Mama said, you need to take a shower. And he said, I, I, I can't. I get it wet. I said, wouldn't you know it? Grandma sent me to Lowe's just two days ago to get you a new shower head so I can take it off. I said, do you think the Lord knew ahead of time that you was going to he looked at me, and I knew what he was thinking. I wish you'd quit saying the Lord. There's times God's looking out for us, going ahead of us and helping us. He's mindful of us, knows right where we're at. We don't want to give him thanks for it. We don't want to acknowledge that his ways are higher than our ways. He goes before us, and he knows what we need. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It's good to be here on Wednesday night. Amen. I'm glad to have our pastor back. How about you? Glad to see him back. Praise God. Well, I don't know what else. I could testify about a lot of things, but I, I feel like I test, should testify about uh, what's burning in my heart and what I was praying about last night and reading about early this morning. As Brother Marino was singing, uh, how many has gone over the hill and you didn't realize there was a policeman there? Maybe had a radar detector and that radar was going beep, 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 beep. Because he was singing the song about uh, the kingdoms of this world shall soon before him fall. My radar was going beep, 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 beep. And I was reading this morning in the book of Daniel. Because yesterday I was reading in the news. I don't know, maybe some of you have heard, some of you may have not heard, but if you've heard the acronym BRICS, I don't mean by laying bricks, I mean B R I C S. Has anybody heard of that acronym BRICS? So that stands for uh, Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. So they're meeting this week in Russia to uh, try to bypass the dollar and create their own currency. Uh, one thing, Putin's mad because of the United States sanctions against him, so he's trying to find a way around it. But uh, these other nations, a lot of them have in common um, is they do not like America. Uh, there's four other nations that are a part of that that are doesn't have to do with the acronym, but there are four other nations, so there's nine. And uh, so I was reading about what was going on over there, and this, that, nine. I was looking for, you know, for just thinking about the end time and what's going to be and what Daniel's seen and what's going to happen, you know. Uh, and this week I read about that it said in the news that. Uh, they're supposed to decide and vote on 
whether Saudi Arabia should join, they want to join, whether they should vote, whether they should join or not. And so they would have the 10 nations right there. Uh, there's 36 other nations that are want to be a part of it when they trade and get it going, but there's 10 main nations. So that's happening. Uh, the meeting is tomorrow. So there's a lot going on in the world. So I was, I was uh, reading this morning. I got up early this morning about 536 or so. I was reading, and I read about where the angel come to Daniel. He said, oh, man, greatly beloved. God's heard your prayer and show you the things that are going to be in the end time. And he's seen a great statue. made a, The head was gold, and the breast and the arms were silver, and the torso was brass, and so on, all the way down to the feet, the iron and clay, and then you have the toes. And it says the iron and clay was mixed, was the toes and mixture there because the iron did not have anything to do with the clay. They don't, you can't mix iron and clay. And so these nations, even the writer of this was saying they just dumbfounded as to why they're getting together because they don't like each other anyway. China and India hate each other. And they don't ha really have anything in common except they want to create a money supply and they don't like America. So that's their commonality. But I was stirred and so I got up and prayed and I read the book of Daniel and what he's seen until I come to the place where it says there was a little stone. And all of this happened and there's a little stone. And it was cut out and it was not made with hands. Thank God that man don't have a thing to do with what's going to happen in this new kingdom. And I read about that that little stone started rolling down and picking up steam. And it rolled down that mountain and it smote the feet. It said the feet of the beast and it was destroyed in broken pieces. And the kingdoms were given to the saints. Hallelujah. <laughs> well, praise God. The kingdoms of this world shall soon before him fall. We shall see the king when he comes. I like to tell you tonight that Jesus did not get his position by promotion. Now that differs from a lot of preachers I've talked to, even especially a lot of denominations. They think some of them think Jesus was my brother's Michael's brother and he got his position by promotion and all of that, but I like to bring you to a scripture where it says the wise men, when they sought the babe, it says, we seek one who was born the king of the Jews. He didn't become king. He was born the king. Hallelujah. He's from everlasting. Hallelujah. And of his kingdom, Daniel said, there shall be no end. You know, it said it'll keep increasing. One preacher preached on that title. He said there will be no, no end to the increase. But don't just increase. There's no end to the increasing. The mountain, the little stone rolled down, smote the beast, and it increased until the mountain become, and it filled the whole earth. Praise God. Yeah. Hallelujah. And it said the whole earth is full of his glory. All those things kept running over in my head. My radar was going like crazy. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. Praise God. The Lord said, Lord impressed upon me, wanted me to share that with you tonight, that there's no end to the increase, and don't fret about it. Just make sure your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life, and you know that stone that's cut out without hands. Hallelujah. God sent him. He wouldn't have come unless God sent him. Man didn't send him. Well, so how do you say that, Brother Dave? Jesus, the truth, said, neither came I of myself, but he sent me. He wasn't a runaway. He didn't run away from home. He was on a mission, a mission to save me and a mission to save you tonight and to help us through this evil day. Praise God. I'm looking to Jesus, my hope, and for that great mountain. I want to be part of it. Well, I better cut it off. My radars are going. Praise God. Wonderful, brother. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, I didn't, Brother Dathan didn't call me and say, I got a testimony. I just felt like having him testify. 
And he started looking around like Brother Dathan Tucker or Brother Dathan. I mean, but, but the Lord knows. Listen, I talked to somebody earlier, and he said, Brother, what, what are we going to do? What's going to happen? I said, lift up your head. Your redemption draweth nigh. The trumpet's about to sound. It's just about home time. The saints are going to be caught out of here. I said, the saints are going to be caught out of here. Come, let's worship the Lord in our giving tonight. Praise the Lord. Ushers, come. Let's worship the Lord. Appreciate you being here. Several, several that are sick tonight. I guess there's some kind of virus or something that some folks has got. It already run through our family, most of them. Uh, grabbed a hold of it and let go of it. But, but we're glad that you're here tonight in the house of the Lord. We're believing the Lord to help us. Father, we thank you for the privilege to be in your house. Pray, Lord, that you'd bless in this offering. Pray you'd bless the gift and the giver. Thank you for the church. We know you're coming back for the church. Minister and move among us tonight. Help us. Thank you for the word of God. We thank you, Lord, that we have our faith and our trust in you. Minister in this place in your name. Amen. Turn with me in your Bibles to the book of Acts, chapter 4. 
I believe what we do, we must do quickly. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 4. I'd like to preach to you tonight, the Lord being our helper. Acts chapter 4. Praise the name of the Lord. Verse 24. Let's start at verse 23. And being let go, they went to their own company and reported all that the chief priest and the elders had said unto them. They'd been threatened. Peter and John has been threatened uh, not to preach. And when they heard that, they lifted up their voice to God with one accord and said, Lord, thou art God, which hast made heaven and earth and the sea and all that in them is. By the mouth of thy servant David hast said, Why did the heathen rage and the people imagine vain things? The kings of the earth stood up and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. For of a truth against thy holy child Jesus, whom thou hast anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate with the Gentiles and the people of Israel were gathered together for to do whatsoever thy hand and thy counsel determined before thee to be done. And now, Lord, behold their threatenings and grant unto thy servants with all boldness they may speak thy word by stretching forth thine hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy holy child, Jesus. And when they had prayed, somebody say when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and they spake the word of God with boldness. And the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and of one soul. Neither said any of them that ought of the things which sold, said of them, the things which they had possessed was his own, but they had all things common. And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. Father, we thank you for your word, the privilege to be in your house tonight. Speak to us, Lord, minister and move in this place. Thank you for what you've done, what you're doing in your presence. I pray, Lord, that you'd help us to realize the lateness of the hour and the urgency of prayer. In the name of the Lord, we pray. And everybody said, amen. God bless you as you're seated tonight. I love Wednesday night service. I had several that called and are in different locations, or either that or they're praying, or they are sick or in some other place. Tonight, I want to preach to you on when they had prayed. Prayer is ought to be a high priority in your life. I don't care how old you are. I don't care how young you are. Uh, Brother Johnson is away preaching at another church tonight. He was away and preaching last Sunday and preaching at another place tonight. He said, I'm 85 and I'm getting more chances to preach now than I have in years. But I asked him, I said, what do you, what, you know, different things. And he said, I'm going to pray and I'm going to believe the Lord. And when he said that, it just struck a chord with me. We, we've got to pray. I said, we've got to pray. I, I don't care how old you are. I don't care. Ethan has the potential. David has the potential to pray and God intervene in young men's life. All the way to the 85-year-old or to the 90-year-old, any. All of us ought to pray. We ought to pray. And we are told to pray without ceasing. We ought to, there ought to be prayer in our heart to God every moment of the day. Asher, he ought to be praying. Brother, Brother Wilson ought to be praying. Men ought always to pray and not to faint. Now, it, it is talked about, prayer is talked about, it's, it's preached about, but there is very little of prayer that is being practiced. It's, it's one thing to 
preach about it, and it's another thing to practice it. You know, you can tell people they ought to pray, but let me ask you a question right now. Do you pray? I want everybody in it. Do you have a time where you sit alone with God and pray? I mean, the importance of prayer. When you read the history of men like Charles Finney and Pray and Hyde and David Brainerd and missionaries that, that went and different individuals that was in their room praying and God began to speak to them and the little girl that was in New York City that was praying there at uh, Metropolitan Tabernacle, part of that church, and, and while she was praying that the Lord would use her, God put a phone number on her heart. And she said, uh, what's the phone number for? And the Lord used me. And the Lord gave her that phone number again. And, and she said, uh, Lord, what, uh, that, I don't know that phone number. And the Spirit of the Lord impressed her to call that phone number. She called that phone number. And it rang and rang and rang and rang. And she hung up the phone. The Lord impressed her again while in prayer. Call that number. She called it again, and it rang, and it rang, and it rang. And then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, she called it again, and it rang, and rang, and rang. And finally, the fourth time, after strong impression of the Spirit of God, then the phone answered, and the man hollered, What do you want? And she was so scared because she wasn't prepared to anybody to answer the phone. She just thought she was obeying the Lord and calling the number. And she said, there is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel. What do you want? Emmanuel's vein. Who are you? And sinners plunge. Beneath the flood, lose all their guilty state. Where are you at? She said, meet me at the church. And she told him where the church was. She went down there. They was getting ready to go to church. She went into church. She was standing there. A man burst through the door and come down to the front, was standing there walking around. Pastor asked if he could help. Said some girl called, some lady sat, and she started singing a song about a fountain filled with blood. The little girl walked up and said, I'm sorry, sir, that was me. He said, why did you call my number? Why did you call my number? Why did you call me? Why did you keep calling me? And she said, because while in prayer, the Spirit of the Lord prompted me to call, and I don't know you, sir. I don't know your number. He said, I was laying. I was, I was laying on the bed. I had my pistol. I had loaded it. I had cocked it. I had put it to my temple, and every time I got ready to pull the trigger, the phone started ringing, and I would put it down, and the phone would ring, and I would get it back up, and I'd get it ready to take my... She, he said, I've lost everything. I've lost my family. I was ready to blow my brains out. Out, but my phone kept ringing. And when I finally answered the phone, you started singing about this fountain filled with blood. Can you tell me about it? And her and the pastor, she said, sir, I don't know you. All I know is that while I was in prayer, while I was in prayer, God brought you to my heart and brought your phone number, and I was praying, Lord, use me. What was she? She was just a young girl who never would have been able to minister to him on the street, but while following, but while following the Lord in prayer, y'all need to hear me right now, prayer, when you begin to pray, God is able to do what no other power can do. We ought to be people of prayer. And when they had prayed, see this prayer first of all was a prayer of expectancy. And when they had prayed, not if they prayed, not when they discussed prayer, not when they used to pray, it wasn't where they prayed, but when they prayed. 
We do a lot of talk, 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 talk about prayer. And I don't want to just preach, preach, preach about prayer. I want us tonight here in a little bit, I'm going to give you an opportunity. And through the rest of this week, I want us to pray. We talk so much and pray so little. We have prayer conferences and then spend five to ten minutes through the rest of the week in prayer. We hear sermons on prayer, but we live in a prayerless way. But these men believe that God answered prayer and they prayed, not just to feel good, not just to give myself, oh, Lord, help me here, bless my food, Lord, touch so-and-so. They got a fever, but they prayed and believed God. The Bible said when Peter and John went up together at the temple, at the hour, at the hour of prayer, the lame man was healed. You can expect results when you come before God and you begin to pray. I'm reminded of the song that the brooks sing, I know what prayer can do. Why? Because we're not just doing something to take up time. We are talking to the almighty creator, the God of heaven, who's able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all we can. The reason you're in the, I feel the Lord, the reason you're in this place tonight is because somebody was praying for you. God laid you on somebody's heart. I'm telling you, I remember when I got down to pray and God began to minister and move in my life. I'm telling you, it is no secret what God can do, what he's done for others, he'll do for you. But you got to pray. When they had prayed, they prayed with expectancy. Now the Bible says when they prayed with expectancy, when they prayed, miracles happened. Miracles happened. The place was shaken. Perhaps it could have been that same mighty wind that happened at Pentecost. Suddenly there was a great earthquake. What happened when they prayed? In Acts chapter 16, when the church come together and prayed, there was an earthquake and the jail cell burst open. The chains on the prisoners fell off. I said, miracles happen when they prayed. Hey, what is going to destroy the bondage of the enemy? What is going to break the chains and bring deliverance to the captive? Y'all need to help me in here. It's not going to be because of a good song and 4-4 time and we got all the musicians. I'm telling you, I'd rather be in a place where the power of prayer is, uh, believing in an almighty God because prayer can do the impossible. When they prayed, the place was shaken. Miracles take place. When they prayed, when they prayed, Jail doors flung open. Peter's in there asleep. Angel comes and kicks him in the side and says, Get up, Peter, let's go. Walks right through 16 soldiers. Prayer. Prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. The angel of the Lord came to him. The light shined in the prison in Acts chapter 12. The Bible said in Acts chapter 17, and these who turn the world upside down have come hither also. How did they turn the world upside down? Because they knew Kung Fu? Because they had some special program? Because they'd been through some kind of class? No, they had seen the resurrected Savior and they prayed and they believed that Jesus Christ was the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hallelujah. I tell you, it's time that the church rise up in 2024. God has not given us the spirit of fear. Don't you be fearful. You go to your knees in prayer and believe God to do what only he can do. Elijah prayed. And the fire fell. Elijah prayed and it rained. Elisha prayed and the Lord opened the eyes of the young man and he saw that the mountain was full of chariots. Elisha prayed for the young man that was dead and God resurrected him to life again. How in the world is God going to bring those that are dead in sin back to life? It's going to be because somebody stretches themselves and prays. Do we pray? Do we pray? And when they had prayed, 
They prayed with expectancy. When they prayed, miracles happened. And when they prayed, the Bible said they was all filled. Look at it. They was all filled with the Holy Ghost. You know what we need? You know what I need? We need a Holy Ghost revival. I got four people that will agree with me. Oh, when they had played, prayed, not played, when they had prayed, the place was shaken, and they was all filled with the Holy Ghost. Nothing like the Holy Ghost power. Hallelujah. Oh, I wish on a Wednesday night. Hallelujah. I pray that on a Wednesday night where some hungry vessels are, you know what we need in 2024? We need a fresh refilling. We need a fresh baptism of the sweet Holy Ghost and power. Oh, Lord, that you would refill us. Would you not revive us again in the midst of the years? Dry churches need this refilling. Dry individuals need a refilling. It's not by might nor by power, but it is by my spirit, saith the Lord. I will pray the Father, and he will give you another comforter, John 14, and out of your belly, in John 7, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water, Ephesians 5 and 18. Be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Luke eleven thirteen. If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more, how much more the Holy Ghost whom God hath given to them that obey him, the gift of the Father. Oh, we're trying to operate in our wisdom. We're trying to operate in just an experience, but God wants to fill us walking in the fullness of the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. In this day, in this hour of so many evil spirits, of, of so many condemning spirits uh, of so many uh, spirits of anxiety, weariness. Uh, I'm telling you, friend, we must be filled with the power. Let the power of the Holy Ghost flow. Let the power of the Holy Ghost flow. Hallelujah. Through us uh, to a lost and dying world. And when they had prayed, it was filled with the Holy Ghost. And look at this. What did they pray for? Next, they prayed for boldness. Lord, behold their threatenings, and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness, by stretching forth thy hand to heal, and that signs and wonders. I don't pray enough. I'm going to pray more. I believe God wants to show himself. I said, I believe God wants to show himself strong. I said, I believe that God wants to show himself. Lord, give us boldness. Give us boldness. They did not back down and hide. Y'all ain't hearing me. They did not back over into a hole. They did not back off, but they said we ought to obey God rather than man. Hallelujah. We can't quit if we wanted to. We got the I can't help it. You ever been around them folks? I just can't help it. Well, it's time the church got a hold of the I can't help it. You need to shut up. I just can't help it. It's like a fire shut up in my bone. You need to keep that to yourself. I just can't help it. I'm telling you, God has done, and this is what God will do for you. We need in these last days that God would give us boldness. They said, for we cannot help but speak the things which we have seen and heard. Lord, give us boldness. You ever imagine Nathan, the prophet, the man of God, when he goes in 
God gives him a word and he goes into King David and he looks at David. He said, there was a man had a whole bunch of sheep and this man had one sheep. The man that had a whole bunch of sheep stole the one sheep from the man that only had one, took his sheep. David got mad. Where's he at? Bring him to me. This is the Randy Snow version. Get him in here right now. I'm going to lay hands on him. And Nathan, with boldness, took his long finger. I know, I know he did this. It's not in your Bible, but he did. He said, Thou art the man. You stole Uriah's wife. Boldness. Boldness. God give us boldness to speak the truth. I've had folks tell me in the last few days, don't like you, don't like your message. Sorry, got to speak the truth. We'll find us another church. I got to speak the truth. Why? Because ye shall know the truth, and the truth will set you free. As long as David is living hid in the sin, God is not able to do what God wants to do. But it, God give us... God give us a heart. God give us a heart like David. Instead of him saying, <laughs> pierce him through, take him out. Man's a liar. David said, you're right. You're right. I've got sin. What do I need to do to get it right? That's a man. When God lays his, oh, I'm preaching to somebody in this house tonight. When God lays his finger on your life, when the Spirit of God convicts you, don't put it off for somebody else. Don't get mad at the messenger. Change and say, Lord, help me. Thank you that you love me enough to send somebody to tell me what I need to do. Nathan stood up with boldness. Elijah stands and looks at King Ahab and says, it's not going to rain on this earth for the space of three and a half years. Can you imagine Moses walking into Pharaoh after all them plagues, after the firstborn has died, the tenth plague, and Moses walks in, points his finger at Pharaoh and says, let my people go. I know we're just the slaves down here. I know I'm just the runaway adopted son, but I'm telling you, let my people go. God, give the church boldness. Give us boldness. They prayed, and when they had prayed, they prayed with expectancy. They prayed and miracles happened. They prayed and was refilled with the Holy Ghost, but they prayed and they prayed for boldness. Let men revile us. Let them persecute us, but we must preach and witness to others and stand firm on thus saith the Lord. I didn't come to please men. I come to persuade men of the power of the God gospel. It don't matter if it's your kids or my kids, honey. If it's sin, it's sin. Turn and do what's right. There's a heaven to gain. God, give us boldness. Pray that we would have boldness. When they had prayed, they received great power. With great power, gave the apostles witnesses of the resurrection. Jesus promised power after the Holy Ghost has come. Paul said to the Corinthians in 1 Corinthians 2, I come to you not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power. Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly, hallelujah, according to the 
power that worketh in us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, we are kept by the power of God through faith. 1 Peter 1 and 5. Listen, God give us power. God give us power. Pray for power. Pray for boldness. Look at this. You're going to like this. When they prayed, believers, they said, with one heart and one soul and one accord. The, the term one accord is 11 times in the book of Acts. None claimed any private possession. They had all things in common. None lacked. And the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and one soul. Unity. I need you. Whether you know it, you need me. Whether you know it, we need each other. And we ought to pray one for another. Stacy, we pray for you. I've been believing God. Brother Raphael, where are you? I prayed. For you and your brothers and sisters and your children and your grandchildren and your siblings, we need each other. Hallelujah. And I know what prayer can do. I said I know what prayer can do. And we ought to pray in unity. Don't backbite your sister. Don't backbite against your brother. It's not a time to fight and flight. It's a time to get on our knees and go to war and prayer and believe God unified together. And when they had prayed, great grace was upon them. Marvelous grace. The favor of God, the mercy of God. The last part of that text that I read to you, the grace of God was abounded unto them. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy. The church needs to pray more. We have to pray more. It is our duty. We fail God, we fail one another, and we fail the world if we do not pray. But if we pray, if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and seek my face and turn from their wicked way, then will I hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. Oh, there's great potential in prayer if somebody would grab a hold hey, a prayer. Hallelujah. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken. When they prayed for boldness, they received grace. When they prayed, they saw miracles. Last Tuesday night, I mentioned Brother Raphael. I had Brother Monty Brooks come up and greet the congregation at the convocation and tell how that after six years and standing right over there while in prayer, how that Brother Lester said, lay your hand on your own head. Pray. What the doctors could not do. What they have no remedy for but prayer. So you know what we're going to do tonight? We're going to believe God that God would deliver and break chains. We're going to believe that God, hallelujah. Do you believe the Lord's coming back? Do you believe that by Sunday, we could be gathered around the portals of glory forever to be with the Lord. Are you aware? I, I appreciated what our brother had to say about what's going on in the nations, what's going on in Israel right now, what's taking place around the world. You don't have, I was, I was talking to a man at the gas station. I like to talk to people. 
Sister Snow says, I talked to everybody except her. I was getting gas. said, hey, bud, how's it going? Man, it's crazy nowadays. Bing. That was like kicking the door down. Yeah. Yeah, it is, buddy, and it's going to get worse. You think so? I know so. But I tell you one thing, it's going to get better. The church is fixing it. You part of the church? Well, I used to go to church. I'm talking about the body of Christ. I'm not talking about a church this is a church building or something. I'm talking about the saints of God. We're going. I mean, I had a captive audience. He's got a whole, he can't leave his gas pump. You know, he's pumping his gas. And I got a captive audience right there to tell him, this thing is turning around. I don't want that man to stand before the Lord and look at me and say, I was talking to you the day before the rapture took place and God prompted you to say something to me and you didn't say anything. Every single one of us, if a little girl can pick up a telephone while being prompted in prayer of a phone number to call a man that's about, what if she hadn't called? I can tell you exactly what would have happened. That man would have took his life. She would stand before God and give an account with blood on her hands because you and I have not just been called and saved so we could sit in a church and criticize whether it's too hot or too cold or the music's too loud or they sang our song. You and I have been saved and brought out of the darkness into the marvelous light so that we could be the hand of God extended to a lost and a dying world. And when we begin to pray, when we begin to pray, God's heart is going to become part of our heart and we're going to see the world the way he sees the world. And he died for the world. And you and I are commissioned. We are called by God to preach, to reach, to each. To preach, to reach, to each. I commission you by the hand of God to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And as we pray, God will lead us and help us. So this is what we're going to do tonight. We're going to do something different. We're not going to have any music. If you're watching online, we love you. And I want you to go pray. I want you to spend some time in prayer. And I'm believing God's going to help you. Right now, as you pray, make a new commitment in the last few days of 2024 to pray like you've never prayed before. We love you. God bless you. We'll see you Sunday.